No. Hey guys, it is me, Cone, and today we are talking about my favorite things of the summer. Arms are moving a lot right now. I'm probably gonna start sweating halfway through this because it is really hot in Texas right now and I have to turn the AC off in order to film because then you'll just hear like So that's good. I should just start. I decided to name this summer favorites because it's kind of like already June and these things have just in general been most of my summer so far. I'll probably do another summer favorites later down the line, but I'm so happy to be back in my room. So happy to be back in my room and making a normal favorites video. It feels so nice and familiar. So I've got my list and let's get started. First up are my fashion favorites. Very first on the list is this shirt that I'm wearing right now. Isn't it adorable? The answer is yes, it is so adorable. Look at it, it is so cute. Anywho, <laughs> this is a Lucky Charms t-shirt. It is super adorable. I got it at a thrift store while I was in Oceanside, California with my friend Summer. It's just incomprehensibly cute and it's super soft and it's in this kind of like vintage style with the cuffs. So part of me thinks that it might be vintage, but I'm not really sure. It's so comfy. I would wear it to sleep. And for once in my whole life, I'm wearing a shirt that isn't a primary color. It's a secondary color. I'm moving moving up, I'm growing up, I'm changing. Green t-shirt? Who is he? Who's Conan? Don't know him anymore. Don't know her? Never met her. Whenever I first found it at the thrift store, I didn't think that I'd even buy it, but then I bought it, and then I didn't wear it for a while, and then I put it on, and I was like, what were you thinking, Conan? This is probably the cutest shirt that you own, so why were you so hesitant? But yeah, super adorable, love the cuffs, very vintage. Next up on the list is this yellow hat. It says US Open on it, which I stupidly don't know if it's golf or tennis. I think it might be golf, but I also think it might be tennis. Anyways, here's the dealio. I lost my one beloved yellow hat that I had. I said Hotel Del Coronado on it, which is a really famous hotel that I've stayed in once, and I loved it so much and I lost it. I have no idea where it went. I lost it about a couple months ago, so I've been looking for a yellow hat for so long. But yellow hats aren't that common, surprisingly. So when I found this at the thrift store, I snatched it so quick. It's perfect Conan aesthetic. There's nothing about it that is wrong. It's perfect. And now, I have all three primary colors. Oh, oh God. Look at them. Look at all three of them. They're so happy. They're so good. So primary. Back to normality. Back to being a normal human being. I am not Conan Gray if I don't have all three primary colors of hats. Next are these two Mickey Mouse Disney t-shirts. I actually bought these at two different thrift stores. I got this one at a thrift store here in my small town and this one at a thrift store in Oceanside. But they're both the same exact style which I thought was really fun and I found that I accidentally made like a new era of my clothing. <laughs> both of these shirts are super super oversized so the sleeves come down really low. So what I like to do is style them with denim shorts and then tuck them in that way. It's just like the top and it looks super 90s, super oversized, super drop sleeve, very punk kid aesthetic Conan. This one says true classic. He's classic. And this one is super weird. It's a Mickey Mouse t-shirt about Mickey Mouse t-shirts. Like there's Mickey Mouse t-shirts on it. I don't really understand why a designer thought that that would be a really good idea, but I mean, I bought it, so he knew what he was doing, I guess. <laughs> really loving these, very nostalgic style, and I'm so glad that I found both of them. Absolutely fate. Next up are my music favorites. First on my list, you guys probably already guessed this, but it's melodrama by Lord. <laughs> Lord has continually defined what existing as a young human feels like. I don't know how she does it, but she always does it. Pure heroine encapsulated what feeling like a teenager was. My middle school years were just pure heroine. Everything about it made so much sense when every single other song on earth didn't make any sense to me. Because I didn't party, I didn't do a bunch of drugs and stuff. Lord was that one artist that everyone needed and she delivered and she just came out of the blue. And I was a little bit scared uh, and I'm sure she was terrified putting out this next album because there was so much pressure on her to make an album that was as good as Pure Heroine. I totally understand that feeling. But melodrama is different enough and just plain good enough 
to stand alone. It's so, so well done. Every single song on it is there for a reason and it's necessary and it's deliberate. And once again, she made music that was absolutely unconventional and threw everyone off guard. That's what I love about Lord is that she never paid any mind to what the music industry was doing at the time. She just made great things and the world loved it. I truly believe that Lord completely changed the music industry when Royals came out. And I'm also a firm believer that Lord is going to be one of the artists that I'm still going to listen to when I'm 75. One of the artists that I'm going to show to my kids and they're going to not like it at first, but then when they're teenagers, they're going to be like, oh, I listen to Lord. Like, <laughs> Lord is going to be one of those people. She's not disappearing. It's super hard to pick a favorite just because every single song on it is a song. <laughs> it's a song. It's a dang good song. But I would say that Homemade Dynamite is probably my favorite as well as Perfect Places. I can't decide though. I can't decide. Liability Reprise, so good. Supercut, everything. There's only 11 songs on it. Every single one is good. If you haven't listened to it yet, if you've just listened to like Greenlight and stuff, just give the whole thing a listen in order. It will change your life, hopefully, because it definitely did change my life. It was the one thing I was listening to the whole time I was in California. Summer and I jammed out to perfect places so many times. <laughs> Next up is a song named Watch by Billie Eilish. I've been following Billie for a while now, ever since her song Ocean Eyes. That got really, really big because it's beautiful. And I've mentioned her in a favorites before because she is just such a great pop singer. She makes pop music, but it's fantastic pop music, and it is a little bit alternative, I would say. She's really young, but she consistently blows me away and reestablishes the fact that age doesn't really mean anything. And the lyrics are just so smart and so good. If we were meant to be, we would have been by now. If we were meant to be, we would have been by now. <laughs> what smart lyrics! I love that so much. All of her songs that she has out right now, all of her singles are killer so good and her album is gonna kick butt i know it she's gonna kick butt the music industry is gonna be ruined she's so good last is a song named don't kill my vibe by sigrid or sigrid i think it's sigrid sigrid is a norwegian singer who kind of was an export out of there and her song don't kill my vibe is the ultimate feel good song the ultimate there's no better feel good songs she's doing a great job and she has a very cool accent. She's going to get very big and I can tell. So be one of the first to be like, oh yeah, I listen to Sigrid, yeah. Become a frat boy, I guess? What was that voice? Last are my lifestyle favorites. First is this 35 millimeter film camera. I've gotten film cameras before, but they're always super janky and they never really work because I always get them from really janky places. But I just got this one not that long ago and I've been taking photos from it. And so far it's working very well, but obviously it's, it's a vintage camera. So it's not like you can get this exact model and expect it to work, which is why I'm not even going to bother tell you guys what model it is. <laughs> I like to have a really crappy film camera and I carry it around with me throughout the year and then by the end of the year or by the time the film rolls out, I'll develop it and it's really nice to see all the delightfully shitty photos <laughs> that come out of it. I really like the effect of film cameras. They just look so cozy and make everything look like a memory. So I'm gonna hold this one around and get it developed and then once I do, I'll show you guys what the photos turned out like. I have used a film camera many times before. I have a bunch of photos from a disposable camera and a film camera on my wall right there. I am so glad that I brought that camera around because those photos are some of my favorite photos that I've ever taken in my whole life. And if you are a student or anyone who's as nostalgic as I am, I would absolutely, absolutely suggest getting a really bad film camera. Once you develop it, you just get reminded of all the good memories. Next up is this light prism, which is on my window at the moment. I got the prism on Amazon for like $10 or a little less than that. So it wasn't that expensive at all. It's just a glass crystal basically. And its sole purpose is to make your room have rainbows in the morning. <laughs> I love it because it makes me start off my day really happily. It's just such a nice sight in the morning to wake up and see all these little rainbows dancing around your room. I don't really remember what the exact name of it is, so I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description below. If you're anything like me and are very affected by your environment, would suggest. Next up is taking the train. Pretty self-explanatory. I took the train a lot the past month because I was in LA and 
I loved it and it was such a nice time to just reflect on the day and prepare my mind for taking on a very big day. I don't really give myself that much time to just sit and think. So being on the train kind of forced me to do that and that's super important, so I really liked it. Last on the list is a Netflix show named The OA. The show is basically a sci-fi thriller, psychological, thinky-thinky show thing. The show is all about a blind woman who was kidnapped and taken hostage for seven years or something like that. And then once she returns, she has sight. And the story follows them uncovering what happened while she was held hostage. But it's also very much a sci-fi show. So there's a lot of, you know, crazy, spooky, but not spooky, but just, you know, like sci-fi stuff. If you like Stranger Things, you probably would like this show. And it was super fun to watch with my friend Summer. Me and her binged it all in the couple couch sessions. And I would definitely suggest watching it with a friend because there are times when it's a little bit stressful to watch and a little bit scary to watch and it's just a fun show to watch with a friend so you can like talk about your conspiracy theories and stuff like that. So that is it. Those are all of my summer favorites thus far. Like always in the comments below I'd love to hear what your guys' favorites for the past month has been because it helps me a lot. It helps me find new music and new shows and things like that that I can hopefully talk about in the next episode and you guys know me very well and always know what I'd like so please if you have something that you really liked in the past month tell me and tell us that way we can find some new stuff and with that i'm going to go i will see you guys in a few days with a brand new video god bless and goodbye <laughs>